Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Nenad Devaka. I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Catalyst 9000 Switching Group. Uh, this is the second part of the series of videos where we're going to be taking a look at the UADP implementation of QoS. Now, in part one of this video, we had a look at the fundamentals of QoS, where we looked at why we need QoS and what QoS is. Uh, and closing off the video, we took a look to see uh, how the, uh, the QoS was implemented at a hardware level on our CAT 9K boxes powered by the UADP ASIC. Now, in this video, we're going to be defining a use case for the traffic that's traversing through our switch. And utilizing the use case, we're going to be building a sample QoS configuration. So let's get started. A quick recap where we talk about the various uh, components that constitute the QoS toolset. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify the traffic that's coming into the system. So we call this the classification. Uh, we have, if you want to limit the amount of traffic that is traversing into the system, we have an option called policing. Now policing, we're going to define a particular rate for the traffic. And if it exceeds that rate, we're going to drop the excess traffic. Next, we have marking where we apply a label onto the traffic. And this label can either be called upon uh, at a later point within the same switch, or it can be called upon at a downstream switch somewhere uh, down, down in the network. Next, we have queuing and scheduling. Uh, queuing helps us split the traffic into different queues. We can assign, uh, we can give different actions to each of the queues and we can treat traffic differently depending upon the queue the traffic enters. And scheduling is the algorithm that is used by the switch to determine which queue can send traffic out and when. Finally, we have shaping. Uh, shaping is also a tool that allows us to limit and control the amount of traffic that's traversing out of a system. Uh, it is very similar to policing. Uh, the difference lies in what we do with the excess traffic. Uh, with policing, we're going to drop the excess traffic, whereas with shaping, we're going to queue the excess traffic and we're going to call it at a downs and we're going to smooth out the traffic curve. Uh, continuing with the recap, uh, taking a look at the QoS tool set and what gets applied where. So when you look at it from a Cat 9K perspective, uh, we have traffic coming in on an interface and we have traffic going out of an interface. Uh, and we can apply the policy map either on the ingress interface or on the egress interface. Now the operations that we can perform with, uh, differs whether we're applying we're, we're doing we're applying it on an ingress or an egress side. So on the ingress side, we can do classification, we can do marking, we can do policing, both conditional as well as unconditional. Whereas on the egress side, uh, we can do classification, we can perform the queuing and scheduling, we can do policing and shaping, and we can do marking. Uh, the final step before we start building the configuration, uh, a quick recap on how scheduling works. Uh, we have two different types of queues. We have priority queue and we have non-priority queues. Now, within the priority queue, we have two levels of priority, priority level one and priority level two. Uh, the way traffic is processed is very simple. You're, as long as there's traffic in the priority queue, uh, the traffic will be processed at the expense of traffic at the expense of the rest of the queues. So since we have two priority levels, <coughs> priority level one has the absolute priority. So as long as priority queue one has traffic, then the rest of the queues will not be forwarding traffic and priority queue one will, will send traffic out. Uh, priority queue two would be able to send traffic out as long as there is no traffic in priority queue one, and the rest of the normal queues would be able to send traffic out uh, as long as there is no traffic in either of the priority queues. Now, uh, if we wanted to uh, prioritize certain normal queues over the other, then we have the option to define a weight which we can associate to, either, to each of the queues. Uh, the way uh, these weights work is higher the weights, the more frequent uh, the, the particular queue would be allowed to send traffic out. So if we take a look at this example, uh, Q2, for example, has a weight of 10. Q3 has a weight of 20 and Q7 has a weight of 40. What this means is Q2 would be able to send traffic out once for every two times that Q3 is able to send traffic out and for every four times that Q7 is able to send traffic out. So now that we have a, a brief refresher on 
uh, on the various components of QoS, let us start building the configuration from the ground up. And the first and the most important step that we need to take over here is to define the use case. And an easy way to define the use case would be to define the characteristics of the traffic that traverses the particular device. So here uh, I have a switch, I have traffic coming in on a single ingress interface, and I have traffic going out of a single egress interface. Now here the traffic that is traversing can be broken into four major categories. Now I'm splitting it up into these four major categories. Uh, you can have a total of up to eight different queues. So I'm utilizing only four of them. So you can make it a lot more granular if you need to. I'm just simplifying things, keeping it simple uh, for ease of explanation. <clears throat> so when I look at the major categories that I can break my traffic into, I have voice traffic, I have video traffic. Uh, the video traffic could either be from endpoints or it could be from users using an application to communicate with someone else. Uh, then I have traffic, uh, the business critical traffic that is required for day-to-day -day operations of the business. And then I have traffic that does not fit into any of the above three criteria. So I have all of the traffic. Now, further de defining the characteristics of each of this traffic, voice traffic by its very nature is going to be low bandwidth. Uh, however, you want to ensure that the traffic gets processed as quickly as possible. Video traffic is going to be a bit more bandwidth intensive when you compare it with voice traffic. So you need dedicated bandwidth. Uh, we also have a requirement of low latency, not to the level of voice traffic, but you still would like the latency to be pretty low. Next, we have the business critical applications. And typically, we would want uh, a high amount of bandwidth for this to ensure that uh, all of the various applications have sufficient bandwidth to, to, uh, to uh, have sufficient access to bandwidth. And then we have traffic that does not fit into any of these criteria. I don't want to block them outright, but I want uh, this traffic to be best effort. I mean, I don't want this traffic in, to eat into any of the bandwidth that is allocated to the remaining traffic. So summarizing what we have in terms of the use case, I need a total of four queues. Two queues, I have a requirement for low, for low latency, aka I need two priority queues. I have one queue for business applications, and I have one best effort queue for traffic, which doesn't match any of the above criteria. Now, before we start building the configuration, let us look at the CLI structure that we use to build the configurations. Now, any device that runs iOS XE, uh, we use a configuration model that is called MQC uh, or Modular QR CLI. Uh, this means uh, that there is a three-step process whenever we want to make any change with respect to QoS, we need to follow this three-step process. The first step is we define a class map. We define the traffic that we care about. Next, we define a policy map where we define the actions that we take on the specific classes. And finally, we define a service policy where we apply the policy map on a particular interface, either in the ingress or in the egress direction. So now let us build the configuration uh, with the use case that we have defined, right? And we'll be, we're going to be taking a look at two different scenarios over here. Now, the first scenario is traffic is coming in pre-tagged, which means that the DSCP or the cost value of the packet is already set uh, before it enters into the system. Now, the switch itself uses DSCP to process packets from a QoS perspective, but if the packet is coming in with a, with a cost tag or an IP precedence tag, then we have default mappings. So we have a mapping of cost values to, to respect to DSCP values and IP precedence values to respect to DSCP values. So the corresponding mapped DSCP value would be used for processing the packet. So here, uh, since the packet is coming in uh, already pre-tagged, uh, we don't need to worry about the ingress policy map. We can directly focus upon the egress policy map. Now, I'll be using the same command structure that I defined in the MQC CLI model. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a class map. Uh, now, in the class map, I'll be matching the respect to DSCP values to inspect the switch, the packet that we're interested in, the traffic or the packets that we are interested in. Now, if you take a look at this example, I'm creating a total of three classes, PQ1 and PQ2. Uh, these are going to match my DSCP EF and DSCP 56, respectively, whereas Q3 is going to correspond to my business critical applications. And I'm going to match a series of DSCP values over here, AF11, AF12, and AF13. Now, when I call upon this class maps in a policy map, uh, 
if you go back to the use case that we defined, two of these classes need to be priority queues. So PQ1 and PQ2 I'm going to define as the priority. PQ1 is going to correspond to my wire traffic. I don't have a requirement for a very high bandwidth when it comes to wire traffic. So I'm setting the percentage, the bandwidth percentage of this to be 10% of the line rate. Uh, PQ2 is going to correspond to my video traffic. Uh, now the video traffic has a bit more focus upon the bandwidth. I need a dedicated amount of bandwidth to ensure that the video, that the high definition video goes through without any drops. So I'm, uh, I'm allocating 25% of the total bandwidth, of the total link bandwidth to this particular uh, priority, queue, priority level 2 class. Now for the applications, I've defined Q3 and I'm giving 60% of the remaining bandwidth to this particular class. And for class default, which is going to be a best of a class, I'm defining a bandwidth of any percent of 35. <clears throat> so here, when you look at the example, we have a total of four queues. Two are going to be your priority queues and one and two are going to be your normal queues. Now we're going to take a look at a different scenario where the traffic tag needs to be updated. In other words, the packet that is coming into the system is untagged or it has an old tag that needs to be updated. So in this example, what we need to do is we need to configure both an ingress policy as well as an egress policy. So looking at the ingress policy first, right? Uh, again, the configuration structure is going to be the same where we'll be using the MQC uh, configuration model. The first step is I'm going to be defining a class map to match and determine uh, which traffic to map to, different, uh, uh, to, 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 to determine the traffic that I need to match. So the first step is, uh, um, in this particular example, I have an IP phone which is sending, uh, which is sending its packets tagged with DSCP24 instead of AF for some reason. And for my video traffic, I have users who are connected, uh, users who are connected, and they are using these applications uh, to send video traffic. Uh, when it comes to the business critical uh, traffic, I have mostly I have my Microsoft Office applications, but I also have certain uh, traffic that goes to a particular server which cannot be classified uh, by use of protocol. So when I configure everything over here, the first thing for my phone traffic, I'm going to be matching DSCP24 because the IP phone is sending traffic tagged with DSCP24. For my video traffic, I'm matching protocol uh, Skype and the WebEx video, which are the applications that my end users use. And for my Q3, which is going to be my, be my business critical apply, uh, applications, I am matching uh, Microsoft Office 365 as well as Microsoft Office web applications. Now, for those, uh, for that, uh, for traffic that cannot be classified using a protocol uh, or with a DSCP tag, uh, I have an access list which are which are, uh, based on which I'm uh, matching and classifying the traffic. Now, the, the match protocol option that you see over here, where I'm matching Skype and WebEx video, for example, directly, uh, this uses a technology called uh, NBAR. And this technology is supported only on our Catalyst 9300 and the 9400 series of switches. So if you're working up on a 9200 or a 9500 or a 9600, the match protocol is not, would not be supported. So the option would be to either match the ACL or the VLAN and use those to classify the traffic. Now the next step once we have defined the class map is we need to call these class maps in a policy map. So here I'm defining a policy map. I am rechanging the DSCP tag for the voice traffic from 24 to EF. Uh, for our pro, for our video protocols, I'm setting the DSCP value to 56. And for my business critical applications, I'm using DSCP AF11 and AF12 as well as cost group of one. Now this is the ingress policy map uh, by its very name. It's applied in the incoming direction and it'll be applied on the interface where the traffic is coming in and it'll be applied in the in ingress direction. <clears throat> the next step after this is we need to define the configuration on the egress side. Again, this is going to be very similar to what we saw in the first scenario where I'm matching the ACP EF, I'm matching the ACP 56, and I'm matching AF11, AF12, as well as cost group one into the respective classes. And I'm keeping the percentages and the breakdowns of the bandwidth similar to what we had in the previous scenario because the traffic uh, pattern does not change between the two. Yeah, so what we have seen is we have looked at the fundamentals of how we can start building a configuration from scratch. 
Again, I want to call out that this is an example configuration that I'm using over here. Uh, we can go a lot more granular because I'm simply making use of only four classes over here, whereas we have the capability for up to eight different classes. So you can make these classes a lot more granular depending upon your unique requirements. Uh, we have come to the end of this particular video, but in the next video, we're going to use the configuration that we have generated over here as a base. And we're going to do a couple of things with this configuration. One, we're going to implement congestion management algorithms into the same, config, into the same configuration. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at how the buffer complex works on the UEDP-based uh, switches. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the examples and command structures of how we can tune the buffers. Again, we'll be using the same configuration as a base and we'll be uh, applying the buffer tuning algorithm onto the same configuration and we'll be building it up from there. Uh, hopefully, you guys found this video helpful. Uh, please do click the bell icon as well as the subscribe button uh, to be tuned on when we release videos on this particular channel. Please also leave your comments uh, and your feedback in the comment section down below. Thank you all and have a great day.